We're in a gorgeous garden today that's been designed by Ashley from Garden Heart and it really does epitomize that saying of garden rooms. We hear about that word so often. Whether you're shopping at a retail center, whether you're listening to an advert, talking to an interior decorator, and even a landscape designer. So is it for you? Should we be doing that in our gardens without having the professionals? Absolutely, because remember we say, eat the elephant in bite-sized chunks. And by dividing your garden into workable rooms, whether it's an entertainment room, whether it's a relaxing room in the garden, whether it's a working room, which would be the veggie garden, we need to do that because it just makes it all that more manageable. And of course, eating an elephant bit by bit is way easier than trying to devour the whole thing all in one go. Let's take a closer look at some of these beautiful elements in a classic, classic style. This garden has been designed literally to form the different rooms which we spoke about. So how have those been used? We've got an entertainment area, we've got a relaxation area, and we've got the pool stroke fun area. And they have been specifically formulated by using the walls of the existing home and by using amazing hedging. And the hedging is really what defines it. So don't be nervous about the fact that hedges can be used perfectly in terms of creating the different styles and your rooms within the garden. It's all about space and proportion. So if you've got a home that's literally two stories high, so we're talking six meters, would it be apt to put a pot in front of it that's 30 centimeters? Absolutely not. And we often make this mistake. So remember to keep your features in proportion with the height of the home. Well, this is a great feature within the garden. And take a look at the height of the wall behind me. But what a clever use of amazing plants. And I want to talk about this plant because it really is quite wicked. It's got little feet, all right? It's, it's almost like a gecko that can walk up walls. There are very few plants in the plant kingdom that actually have their modified roots which can stick to surfaces and it literally sticks like a gecko and then is able to climb up. This little guy over here is called Ficus repens, or the Tiki Creeper, as some of us might know it, but perfect for hiding and disguising and camouflaging a terrible wall. I mean, you could imagine the glare that would come off a three meter high wall down into you while you're sitting in your entertainment area, really rough. And Tiki Creeper, you normally buy in little bags from your local garden center, you pop it right at the base, near the wall, and it's amazing. Nature takes its course, it knows that there's a wall there, and up it starts going. One word of advice though, if you are planting Tiki Creeper to go up walls, please folks, please, please, you must keep it well pruned and in check. This is actually its juvenile foliage, the small foliage here. If you let this guy go, and I mean don't prune it and keep it nice and neat against the wall. Literally its stems can become 10 to 15 centimeters thick and it gets huge fruit that almost looks like a guava and these guys, these roots are the ones that cause problems. I love this grove of fever trees and because it's been staggered with the planting, because of the wonderful height and opening up of the beautiful stems, I mean, aren't they gorgeous? And when the afternoon light catches these guys, they almost glow like luminous. And it's not very often that in nature you find this amazing color. Interesting thing about the fever tree is that it used to be called an acacia, but it's now called vichelia but it's still got its second name, Xantha Flowey. Now, back in the days, literally when the first settlers arrived in South Africa, this tree was thought to give malaria because it normally grows naturally in swamp areas. And where swamp areas are, or low-lying areas, that's where you found mosquitoes. But it was this, in fact, do you see that yellow? It was that that our early settlers thought gave them malaria, but it actually wasn't that, which is why its common name is called the fever tree. 
Nevertheless, it's been proven not to be as such, and it has become a staple plant of many beautiful gardens. The most spectacular feature in this garden has to be these beautiful pots. Simplicity works, and you can see how beautifully it works here. Three glazed terracotta pots. I love the green. The green just adds a sense of, of foresty, of naturalness. Remember, if you are going to be putting a feature in your garden, it has to either be off one of the main axes of the house, so a central location or following a wall, or it needs to be at the end of a path or something to draw you down there. Features stuck in the middle of nowhere or in the corner of a property are often the most wasted. So allow it to breathe, allow it to have its beauty and allow yourself to be able to walk around it because it's a hard landscaping feature. You're spending quite a bit of money on it, so get to enjoy it. I love the hedge around it. It's the little star jasmine, which we find normally climbing up a pergola or going over an arch, but here it's been clipped into a neat little hedge that really accentuates all of the lines of this feature and clipped into a neat hedge like this looks fantastic. Of course, it still is gonna flower with its beautiful little star-shaped flowers that are heavily perfumed all the way through summer. Really great feature. Because this garden has lots of formal lines in it, I really love the way that the paving has been used here. Instead of putting it square on with the cobble edging and with the feature behind me, it's been used in a diamond pattern. Something so simple, literally taking a square paver, but popping it in a different angle so that you can get a bit of movement into the area. Of course, age old favorite, the Mondo grass in between. This is Coyote Dwarf which does a perfect job in sun or in shade and really can take a major beating by any gardener and it will still come back and smile for you and do its job. 